Hey everyone, welcome back to Equa's Big Deal. It was a slightly underwhelming return to the vlogosphere last week. But I'd like to just keep the ball rolling. I'm really excited to announce that I locked a picture on a short film I directed called New York I Love You, starring Mami Abuafo and Mohamed Dion. It was really a film I made that came out of my own experience of living in the city and feeling that it was the best and worst thing that ever happened to me creatively. I first wrote the story for a Fulbright application that I was applying to go back and study film in Nigeria. I was trying to develop a, a course of study where I could study theater arts, screenwriting, you know, kind of develop my own um, course in essentially African film. So I wrote a story about a young woman who was a struggling actress who decided that she wasn't making it in New York and so she was going to move home to Nigeria where she was going to become a huge Nollywood star. <laughs> and needless to say, I did not get that Fulbright. The script kind of stayed with me and also this idea and feeling about leaving New York stayed with me and I adapted it into the short film about a woman who in a relationship with a guy who's really successful and good at what he does. He's an actor too. And she gets it in her head that maybe her life will just be better. She's not in New York anymore. Maybe things will just be different. So the film is really a meditation on her relationship to the city. In the course of it, she visits all of her favorite places and tries to make up her mind whether she's going to leave or not. Kizembe? Yes, V. Do you think that if you ever left your life for a while, just disappeared, that nobody would notice? V, babe, where'd you get this shit? When I was a kid, I used to think that if I died, nobody would care. <laughs> Look at the life I live, hmm? Subletting this fucking apartment. I don't even have curtains. Been hanging up bed sheets over blinds for months. And I can't even bring myself to buy a monthly Metro card. Just keep wasting money on weeklies like I'm gonna get a call from a producer and get up tomorrow and leave. I mean, everything is so temporary. You're on the come up, V. <laughs> we all are. Relax. See for you to say, Mr. Law and Order. That was one gig. When are you gonna stop calling me that? Yeah, but you keep getting gigs, Kasembe. Mamiya, who's been starring in an African city, directed by, uh, or produced and directed by Nicola Martifio, who's a Ghanaian producer who basically has taken this web series and put it on the front page of CNN. You guys will enjoy the performance that you see Mamiya give in the lead role as a VN, and also Mohamed Dion, who's been working on his great documentary, Going Home, Guinea Conakry. You can check out more information about his project also below. They pay, play a strong pair, a, a, a match, Vivian and Kazembe. It's really interesting thinking about being an artist and a creative person and also thinking about relationships. This is not what this blog is supposed to be about, but this is what's coming to me right now. Because I think it's really important as a creative person to have people in your life that can support you in the work that you do emotionally, spiritually, relationally, um, psychologically. Having effective support systems are really essential to get through many of these MFA programs we all put ourselves through, essential to get through many of these projects. Um, to have people in your corner, not just people you can turn to for your crowdfunding campaigns, but people who you can talk to and confide in when you really need um, support, love, care, patience, compassion, because oftentimes, as a filmmaker, and I know people in other fields as well who cope with similar challenges, it's hard to find people that really, let me, let me not phrase it that way. When you find someone that you can relate to, who understands what you're trying to do, the work and the vision that you're trying to put out into the world, hold on to them and really nurture those relationships because without them, we're all struggling in this big city, this big world, this creative crucible alone and it's not worth it. I really think it's not worth it to go it alone. 
particularly um, when so much of the work that we do requires collaboration. That's an essential skill. Um, being able to reach out when you need help, being able to ask for the support that you need, being able to tell people in your life when you need help, when you're having a rough moment, and also for them to give you the kind of encouragement that keeps you going and also give you the kind of constructive criticism and feedback that helps you to be a better artist. So, and I will say, <laughs> I'm not supposed to get this personal. This is what I encountered last year. I said, I don't think I'm ready to talk about my life in this way. But I'm gonna mention this because it came up for me this weekend. I went to the beach. Uh, I went to Orchard Beach yesterday morning and I did so because my friend Nicole, who's a wonderful artist, uh, teaching artist, practitioner, teaches wonderful um, arts projects, programs all over the US and now the world, she's going to Germany soon to students and had a wonderful Kickstarter campaign that was multiply funded and so I'll put information about her as well. It was her birthday and she wanted to go check out the Botanical Gardens uh, Frida Kahlo exhibit which has been, it's just gonna run through to November. So I knew I was going up to the Bronx. I was feeling very ambitious. I said, cause I used to live in the Bronx and my favorite beach, Orchard Beach is up there. So I said, let me go up early. I'm gonna go to the beach and get a little sun. So I'm actually a little bit tan. I don't know if you can notice. And then I'm gonna pop over to the Botanical Gardens cause it's a short bus ride away. This all proved very ambitious cause the trains were not running at all the way that they should have been. You know how it is on the weekend. So, um, but I took a beer with me to the beach. I took a Corona with me because um, my second year of film school, I was in a relationship that ended quite dramatically on the beach in Coney Island. <laughs> he was a recent immigrant to the U.S. and he had been an actor back home. He had actually traveled all over Europe uh, performing theater, um, dance. He was, you know, really well known back home actually and came here and experienced, and of course he didn't know the language at first, but he had a really difficult time getting a leg up. And so he was working as a manager at a drugstore. Still had lots of uh, friends working in the creative fields, but he wasn't pursuing it himself. And what I found in through the relationship is that there was this kind of tug of war where he didn't quite understand what I was trying to pursue in film school. And it created a lot of friction and tension in our relationship, which actually ended twice, but this was the second ending that was really dramatic on the beaches of Coney Island or <laughs> there shortly thereafter where we went for just to have fun. And, um, it involved him bringing a bunch of beer and no food <laughs> to the beach. And me being incredibly hungry, my blood sugar going lower and lower and lower until the point I was so irritable that we kept bickering and arguing with each other and basically on the way home, ended up sitting on two different ends of the subway and that was that. So I took a beer in his honor to the beach. <laughs> Because I actually haven't had a boyfriend since then. And so I had made this decision, oh, my last year of film school, I'm not going to be in a relationship. I'm going to focus on my work. It's, it's sabotage to try to do anything other than that. And so I didn't really. But in certain ways, I needed the space. I needed to... I needed to heal, one, and number two, uh, I needed to put myself first and minimize the distractions to doing that, to putting myself and my work first. But now stepping, now it's been three years since we broke up, um, and I dated, don't get me wrong, I just haven't done the real couple thing. It's easy to get into that space and stay in that space. And I've spoken to so many of my sister friends who've been in that space and stayed in that space. And not just my sister friends, but artist friends who say, I'm focusing on my work. I'm not doing a relationship right now. And I want to say that we all have to see ourselves as having a greater capability to both relate to people 
in a loving, giving, compassionate way and also do our work. And we also have to think about how those support systems free us to do our work. Because knowing that there's someone out there who loves you, cares for you, supports you in everything that you do can really be the wind to your sails. And I think too many of us get into that either or dichotomy, which I don't think is realistic. Because it also makes me think of all of the artists, young and old, that I've known who've passed on. They were on their grind. They thought that, you know, the next corner was around the next corner and then it was over. And we do have a really limited time here. And I think it's important that we make space not only for our creative work, but for our hearts. And it breaks my heart when I talk to so many of my friends and artists, colleagues that don't make that space. All they feed is their work. It will not come sit by you when you're sick in the hospital. It will not make you chicken soup when you've got a cold. It will not call you. <laughs> These friends that you know are all your friends on Facebook or Twitter that come and support your work and give you money. Don't take the place of those real bonds and relationships and support systems. I'm saying this as much to you as I'm saying it to myself because I realize more recently that it's an important time for me to shift that energy and to really make the time and space um, to not only care for myself and my work, but also for somebody else. Because it's all about interdependence, it's about mutual care and support, and it is possible. And I think sometimes when we go through bad experiences, like for me with my ex-boyfriend, um, it makes us really skittish and shy about trying again. And one thing I'm really pleased with myself is as many times as it maybe goes wrong, I always try again. I've had, I think I've had some really great loves in my life. I've had some that are still really close friends. And so in a certain way, I don't feel that lonely. Um, I'm still able to reflect, to grow. I'm still able to care, to show up to be excited to meet someone or to continue growing in a relationship with someone. And um, I think it's a wonderful thing and I think it's important. And I'm saying this because all of the blogs I read and the articles about creativity and um, making your work, very few actually talk about relationships. And oftentimes I've noticed the most successful people in terms of their productivity and being able to make their impact in the world have been people that have been in supportive relationships. And so I'm gonna say it out because I don't think you're gonna hear that today. <laughs> we know that every president of the United States would not have gotten elected without, without a wife and hopefully soon we're gonna say without a husband. And I'm not saying that everyone should follow this heteronormative ideal of, of what it is to be happy, to have a spouse and to have a home in the suburbs with a white picket fence. I'm just saying have people in your life that support you and love you and care for you. Those people aren't always people with whom you have an intimate, by that I mean sexual relationship. They can be close friends, they can be colleagues, they can be mentors, um, they can be peers, they can be youth that you mentor but that we should all keep this uh, an important part of the work that we do because it's what feeds you, it's what sustains you, both in the good moments and in the not so good moments. So that is what I'm saying today. And I did take my Corona to the beach and um, I sipped it for my ex-boyfriend and I remembered um, uh, the good times and some of the bad times. And then I just had a really, really good laugh about it. I don't know where this all began and how I got it. <laughs> oh, I was talking about relationships with New York, I love you. In the film, Vivian has to grapple with what she's gonna do, whether she's going to stay, both in the relationship and in the city, or go. Um, 
But I think I'd like to complicate it further, which I think the film does as well, and say that it's not an either or. How do we function as creative people with all of the different pressures on our time and different directions we're pulled in, um, but also make space for care and support and nurturing um, and make space for ourselves, for us, for the person we are inside. All of these things have to be balanced. Again, there's more sirens outside. I apologize for my burrow. <laughs> um, yeah, that's my message for today. I had some other things to say. Maybe I should wait for the siren. I had some other things I thought I was going to say, but I, I would like to leave it there. Um, also because this is nothing anyone ever spoke to me about growing up, you know, relationships, never spoke about that. You know, it was all about school achievement, you know, doing well, working in your community, going places. And so I wish someone had said that to me because I don't think it was always my strongest suit. But I'm getting better, making more time and trying to make, you know, critical choices about how I use my time. I wish I had a, a pithy phrase like uh, Susie Orman, people first, then money, then things. I don't, but maybe I will come up with one. All I have to say is I want you to ask yourself, what's the big deal? You are. See you next time on Equal's Big Deal. I hope you enjoyed this little tidbit of something. And <laughs> I've taken something from it. I look forward to talking to you soon.